How's it going everybody? Dr. Coin back at it again and welcome to the Coin Cave. In today's episode, we're going to be going over some of the most rare and valuable Canadian quarters you can find in your pocket change. Now today we're going to be discussing the three most low mintage modern quarters. Now there's a lot of different key dates pre-1970 that you can definitely go after, especially the 1948. but. We're going to be discussing post-1970, and the reason we're going to be discussing these is they're the easiest to blend in. They are all the caribou design, the modern quarters that we all see on a daily basis, so they can easily slip in and slip through, and you can pick these out and make a couple bucks off them if you know what to look for. But before I do show you each and every one of these very rare quarters, I would appreciate if you all would hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more coin collecting videos just like this. Then what do you say I start breaking down what it is you should be looking for when it comes to that great Canadian caribou. One of the things that separates Canadian coins from other coins around the world, and especially from our US counterparts, is the mintage figures. Now the mintages on Canadian coins are much, much lower, and the reason for that is pretty simple. Our population is much, much lower. When you have a low population in a country, you won't have as much of a need to produce circulation coinage. And throughout the developing history of both the United States and Canada, their population has always been very, very high compared to most of the world. So they have always needed to produce a lot of coinage. If you go back and look at the circulation numbers for just about any year, you will find that theirs are sometimes two, three, five, ten times higher than our coins here in Canada. So the reason that our mintage figures are so low is we just do not have the need to produce as many coins as other countries around the world. Though the designs of the obverse changed as different monarchs ruled and came in and out, the design of the reverse remained rather unchanged until the year 1937 when the caribou came into effect. The design of the quarter then remained the same until the year 1973 when the very first Canadian commemorative circulation coin was released, the 1973 RCMP. The 1973 quarter has two variations, a small bead and large bead variation. The large bead being extremely rare and valuable, but the chances of finding one are almost impossible. So there's no point really in looking for them in your pocket change. You might as well just keep any 1973 you find. Then in the year 1974, they went back to the caribou design until the year 1992 when they came out with the provincial series. At the time, Canada only officially recognized 12 provinces, so there are 12 provincial quarters in the set. Each of the different provincial quarter variations were either minted slightly over 10 million or slightly under 10 million, so they're all low mintage and considered key dates as well. The design then went back to the caribou, and then in the year 1999, the first of two 12 coin millennium sets was issued, and so begun the Canadian reign of commemorative coins. A set was issued the next year for the year 2000, and then in the year 2004, the very first ever Canadian colored enamel quarter was released. And then the floodgates opened, and many, many colored Canadian commemorative coins came after. They are all sought after, they are all relatively low mintage, but they are also not what we're going to be discussing today. Some of these colored coins are very beautiful and have some low mintages. They are not nearly as valuable as the coins you see before you right here. These are as rare and as hard to find as they get. It took me months and months to find some of them, searching thousands and thousands of dollars of quarters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and explain to you why the mintage is so low for each of these. Because it is not a coincidence, it is not chance, there is actually a reason why the mintage is so low for 1970, 1991, and 2000. Now, the year 1970. I always figured it had such a low mintage because they were all just sitting around, smoking doobies, having crazy hippie parties. Yeah, but it's got some Labrador in it. What's Labrador? It's dog shit. 
What? The answer is much less fun and much more legitimate than that. It is minted at 10,302,010, and the reason it carries such a low mintage figure is in April 1st, 1969, the Royal Canadian Mint transferred from a company that was producing mainly circulation coinage for the government to a private business that is now operating for profit. And the circulation coinage suffered heavily that year. The production suffered heavily because of the transfer over. But it worked out great for us collectors in the end because we now have a very awesome key date to look out for. And if you guys are looking for an answer, that is it because I was wondering for a while. And most of the other denominations also have low mintages for that year. The nickels, the dimes, 1970 is a key date pretty much across the board for that same reason because the company changed hands. And that actually leads us to our next quarter. The Royal Canadian Mint after the year 1969 started operating solely as a business. And operating as a business, it changes procedures a lot. A lot of things benefit us as a coin collector, especially this next big blunder. This right here is one of the most rare and low minted circulation quarters ever produced in the entire world. This was a bit of a blunder by the Royal Canadian Mint and it's minted at 459,000. I mean, the design on this shouldn't even be a caribou. It should be a unicorn. Christ! Did you see that unicorn? Its horn was so shiny. Mintages just shouldn't be that low, especially when it comes to modern coinage. Now this is 1991. The reason that this is minted so low is because in the year 1992, they released the Provincial Quarter Series. Now it is minted somewhere in the 130 to 150 million range for that entire series. And as a premonition, thinking that they were gonna be overflowing the amount of quarters, they did not make as many in 1991. Now, in terms of value, one of these in BU condition can go anywhere from 20 to $30, depending on its designation. But even if you find one in circulated condition like this one right here before you, it can go for a minimum of five to ten dollars so this is even more valuable than silver a full roll of these brilliant uncirculated goes from five hundred to seven hundred dollars this is the most rare and valuable modern Canadian circulation quarter you can find it is lightning in a bottle it is dynamite if you can find this thing do not think about it hold on to it the 1991 is also very rare for nickels and some of the other denominations as well I do not know if that blunder also affected the other denominations or what the dealio is for that but man am I happy that we have this quarter right here last but not least we have the 2000 no p minted at 8,409,000, slightly different from the nickel, which is the 2000P you wanna look for. This one right here is very rare, very key date, and the difference between the P and the no P is pretty simple. Right here, under the Queen's bust, you will see a little P mint mark, and that stands for multiply steel plated, and in this variation, you will not see the P, so it is just that little difference right there that makes all the difference in the world you wanna look out for. Now, when you are hunting quarters, for the 2001 no P, you will find hundreds of the 2001 P variations. So this right here is very rare, very beautiful, and it is one you definitely want to look out for. It is these nice little blunders that makes coin collecting here in Canada so much fun. You know, a lot of the old key dates are fun to look for. The 1948, you got the Canadian nickels, the George Fifths that are very rare you can look for. They got a few years in there, very low mintage, but these, in terms of comparing American and Canadian coins are super low mintage. I mean, the W's and some of the low mintage key date American quarters are not nearly as low as these Canadian ones. So keep an eye out for these guys because these are rare and valuable. I would say this is worth three to $5 if you can find it in this condition that you see right before you here because it is very hard to find these to fill out collection books and a lot of people are willing to pay a premium for them online just for that reason. Well, as far as the modern quarters go, I think it pretty much does it for this one. There's a lot of uh, cool color enamels you can look for. Some of them are rather low mintage and can be very hard to find as well. 
but in terms of the modern caribous it doesn't get any more rare or low mintage or key date than these three you see before you right here i would keep an eye out for them you know if you get changed back from getting your double double or going out there and getting some burgers or something like that it never hurts just to check the date really quick and make sure you don't have something that's worth a couple bucks instead of a couple cents that's always been my mentality when it comes towards it but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did i'd really appreciate just one more time if you would hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you knew and other than that guys thank you so so much for watching until the next one peace out and have a good one y'all